structured argument with the variable number of positional arguments. So now we're going to carry on and we're going to extend this even further because just as you can have an arbitrary number of positional arguments, Python also lets us have an arbitrary number of keyword arguments. So this is done um, if you've got um, a, a, a large number of potential options um, that might be going into, a, into the function and it would just get very tedious to have to define separate keyword parameters for every single possible option. Or alternatively, and one thing you quite often see um, in the kind of programming you'll be doing in this module, um, you might be calling another function from within a function and the function you're calling itself takes a whole bunch of different parameters. And so it's important to be able to go and, and pass them through conveniently. So the way this is done is a bit like having the star syntax, except it's a star star. It's a double star. So here's an example where we've done this. So again, we're just adapting the existing example. Um, I've just given it star args and star star keywords. So this is going to be um, uh, very similar to the, to the previous example. Um, I've taken away the ability to change the number of vowels. We're just doing this with a fixed number of vowels. And I'm not going to print out what args is, I'm going to print out what the keywords is. Um, so now I'm going to do a call um, and I'm going to pass it the same calls we just did, I'm going to pass it the vowels LCP. Um, so what you see um, is it tells us that from the print inside the function it tells us that the keywords is a dictionary um, and that it has a key vowels and a value LCP, which you can see from the call kind of makes sense. So the keywords are being fed back to us as a dictionary where the dictionary key is the name of the parameter and the value is the value that you've been assigning to that parameter. Now the way I've written this function it doesn't really work because I've actually got a fixed vowels list in there. So you see what it actually returns is is the wrong answer for having told it vowels is equal to LCP. Um, so that's the next thing to go and work on. So just to reiterate, the keywords is a dictionary and the keys are the name of the, of the uh, keyword parameters, uh, or the keyword arguments rather, and the value is the corresponding value of the argument. So if we want to actually access those keywords, we need to use some standard dictionary methods. So again, see the uh, third unit of the Python syntax tutorials for more details on this. So here we go. So again, very similar code, except now um, rather than the vowels being a fixed um, uh, string, I'm doing keywords.get and then asking it for the vowels um, key of that dictionary. Now, of course, I can't guarantee that vowels is in that dictionary, so I have to give it a default value as well. Um, uh, so it makes it a little bit more complicated, but you're basically still doing uh, a similar thing. You're kind of manually having to do the process of assigning uh, parameters or assigning variables to the to the arguments that have been passed into the function. And the rest of it then all works as we'd expect. And you see when we run this, um, it now returns the correct value. So when a function is called, what happens is the positional arguments, that is the things in your calling line, are sorted out first. Then any keyword argu uh, arguments that match keyword parameters are assigned. And finally, any remaining keyword arguments are passed to the double star um, uh, arbitrary keyword uh, parameter, which is coming back as a dictionary. So um, in the function um, def line, the double star is therefore must come last in the definition because it's the thing it is handed over last. It takes whatever's left. Um, so there is this thing that if you have a function that includes both an arbitrary number of positional parameters and an arbitrary keyword parameters, so in other words it's got both star and double star parameters, it's going to match any combination of arguments you choose to give it. It could seem quite tempting to want to write all your functions like this, but it's not a good idea. Um, one of the problems is it means it's much harder to go and debug um, when a function does something unexpected because you've got no mechanism to say well did I actually get the parameters did the parameters I expect to get set get set correctly um, it makes it much harder to detect whether the function is actually being used correctly so generally it's best to avoid doing this unless you have a particularly good reason to want to do otherwise 
Um, the other thing you've got to be aware of is if you're using either the star or double star parameters, then it's up to you as the person writing the function to do all the legwork of making sure that the parameters are what you expect there to be. They've got the right number of parameters, the right names of parameters, and to go and raise errors if anything in the call is not as you expect it to be supplied. Um, so there's a bit of extra legwork. So again, um, it can be convenient in some situations, but it can also mean more work uh, when you come to write the function. And so generally speaking, you only want to use arbitrary numbers of arguments when there's a really good reason to do so.